In this video, I'm gonna show you the correct way to handle your 3D printing filament and how to resolve those annoying tangles that happen from time to time. Believe it or not, I've never done a video like this on Maker's Muse, and it's one you don't want to miss. So let's get started. How's it going guys, Angus here from Makers Muse. As I said, I haven't done a dedicated video on filament management before, but it is a critical part of running your 3D printer because it's what it uses to make physical objects and if it jams up or you know, has issues, then your part will fail. And I mean, 3D printing isn't reliable at the best of times, so you really wanna give it the best chance of success possible by managing your filament correctly. And as you can see here, filament comes in a crazy wide range of types. There are so many different spools on the market. They're all non-uniform, there's no standard. It drives me a bit nuts if I, I'm being honest, but they all kind of work the same in terms of loading, unloading, and storing the filament while you're not using it. But why is this such a difficult thing to do? Can't you just grab a spool, you know, do this, you know, grab it, chuck it in the 3D printer and off, off you go? Well, I suppose you could, but you're gonna run into issues sooner rather than later. You see, think of filament like fishing line. It's all spooled onto a roll continuously and it has this all important end. And what I just showed you then is the last thing you ever wanna do because if this loops under itself, it will develop a knot which will tighten and jam and stop your 3D printer from extruding. And this is very important because a lot of 3D printers on the market now have filament runout sensors that detect the filament is now gone but they won't detect if it's jammed and then stopped feeding because it's still pressing up against the switch. And if this happens, the 3D printer will just happily keep printing in thin air and your print will be a failure. So let me show you how to correctly load a brand new spool of filament onto one of my 3D printers. All right guys, so this is the XVCO Pioneer. I reviewed it not too long ago. It's a decent Ender 3 style machine, but we don't really care about how good it is. What I have here is a wisp of filament that's been cut off. Let's pretend that the filament's run out and this is the end of it. And we need to unload filament before we can load filament. Now this is where you can run into a lot of issues. A lot of 3D printers will have a really good load and unload routine. So look in the manual or look in the menu of the machine to see if it has that. But the first thing you need to do is preheat. Preheat to the temperature of the material that you have currently loaded. In this case, it's PLA, so 200 degrees or so will be enough to preheat. All right, this machine's up to 200 degrees Celsius. Now it's ready for us to unload the filament. It's really tempting to grab this, release the tension and pull it, but stop right there. What often happens is the filament will soften above where the melt zone is. And if you just pull the filament after it's preheated, that will cause a plug and a jam. You won't be able to pull it out and it will jam inside the PTFE tube. That's a bad idea. So what most unload routines do is extrude a bit. So it goes forwards and then pulls back quickly. So basically we wanna do that. We wanna extrude a bit of plastic first and then quickly retract. As I said, a lot of machines have built-in routines to do this. So use the unload routine if it has one, but this machine is pretty basic. It doesn't do that. So I'm gonna do it manually to show you how to do it in case you need to. And also it's quite quick. So if you get good at this, it's a quicker way of loading and unloading filament. All right, so we're at temperature. I'll push down the uh, tension lever like this, not too much because then it jams up again. Push filament forward, you can see it's extruding and then pull it quickly back. Right, there we go. See that gunk that came out the end there? That's what usually causes the jam. That thing there, see it sort of stretched a bit. And you can see all the wispy stuff that came out behind it. That's all stuff you need to sort of carefully remove, which is why extruding first and then withdrawing is highly recommended. And also notice it snapped. Um, for some reason, and I haven't quite figured out why, PLA becomes very brittle when it's left in burden tubes. And sometimes it can actually snap in there. Um, and when I pulled it out, this actually, it's actually snapped. It's not that brittle. So why did it snap so easily when I withdrew it? Why is it brittle there? I'm not exactly sure. So if this happens with a filament snapped inside the tube, you often just have to keep extruding plastic in to force the old plastic out. Um, and if your filament is very brittle, I would recommend withdrawing after every print instead of just leaving it in there overnight. Alrighty, now with our filament withdrawn, we can start loading our new spool. This is a roll of fluoro orange PLA. I have no idea what the brand is. Doesn't actually matter. This is generally how it should come. It should come uh, sealed with a vacuum bag and a desiccant inside. 
down in there. Um, if it doesn't, it means it might be damaged from moisture. Uh, PLA, it's not such a big deal. Moisture does affect it, but not hugely. Something like nylon or polycarbonate, you definitely have to have it shipped in a bag like this, otherwise it'll be stuffed. Full of moisture. All right, I've got to pop that seal. I often use my trusty spatula just to pop a hole in the middle. Rip them open. There we go. Some uh, rolls actually come with a reusable bag, which is handy. You can keep it around and seal it, keep dust off it, which does help. Uh, but often they just come with those one-use uh, vacuum bags. Okay, so in terms of the actual windings, this is a pretty budget spool. The windings are pretty rough. Uh, higher quality brands will have quite a nice machine wind where it's very uniform, but this should still work fine. The key is this bit here. So if you can see this little bit, this is tucked in and this is keeping the whole thing from unwinding. And this is where newcomers often make the mistake. You see, it's very tempting to open this up, undo that and just let it go. And that's what I, like I showed before, the whole thing will unwind like fishing line and you will get tangled, you will get knots. And knots in 3D printing filament are quite sinister for a reason I'll show in a minute, but let me just show you how to correctly load this filament. The trick is to always keep tension on that end. Never release tension, otherwise you're gonna end up losing control and you're gonna get a, uh, most likely gonna get a tangle. Okay, so our machine is still preheated from before. It's ready to go. Our previous filament's been purged and withdrawn. We're ready to load this up. So I'm gonna undo this bit here with my hands. Push it through into the filament there. Grab it and lift it, all right. So I'm always keeping tension on this spool. I'm not letting go and letting it do that or anything like that. See how easy it is? So if that happens, right, it's okay. Keep tension, put it back on. As long as you're keeping your hand on this end, it can't not. See, it cannot physically go under the other, other filament if you're keeping your hand on it. Okay, now we need to feed it into the machine itself. And this is where you're gonna need some side cutters because we wanna make a nice sharp point on this end of the filament. Uh, a nice sharp wedge basically, which will help it go and guide into the PTFE tube through to the hot end. The only time you wouldn't want a nice sharp tip is when there's filament already jammed in the tube, in which case you will want it flat so it pushes up against it. But in this case, a nice sharp edge, a wedge like this helps you guide it in. Most of you will have a spool holder mounted to your machine but I don't because they don't fit under the, the shelving, so I use these handy dandy portable spool holders, link in the description. I'm just gonna put my spool on here, like that. Got my roll. Now this way, being careful, it's not gonna tangle, it's all good, it's all lined up. You put the end in, push the tension wheel down a bit, get it past the gear, and then push it through. And you can see it's starting to go into the tube there. And then you can just push it all the way through to the hot end. Again, your machine probably has a loading routine built in. This is just for the most basic of printers, or if you wanna be a power user, you can do this a lot quicker than the built-in routines will. But now I've got it all the way through the hot end, and you can now see it's starting to come out of the nozzle. Just pushing it manually. You can see it's purging the old color. And with that, we're good to go to start our next print. Alrighty, so now you know how to load and unload filament properly on your 3D printer. Again, every 3D printer is different, but that's a very good basic general approach to loading and unloading manually if your machine doesn't have a very good built-in routine to do it. But what about tangles? Well, like I hinted at before, filament tangles are the bane of our existence. You come back to a print, the print's just printing midair, and your filament's tangled. Now I have taken the time to pre-tangle this roll of filament to show you what it is and why it's so nefarious and why so many people seem to think that manufacturers do it. That's because the knots travel. So I've looped this under itself. I've taken the end of this filament and I've looped it under itself and it's got a tangle in it. So as I pull this, hear that sound? It's actually, underneath some of the other coils and it's actually tangled up. It'll still keep printing. It'll absolutely keep printing until that knot gets too tight and then eventually jams, your filament stops feeding. So how do we remedy this? Well, let me show you. 
All right, so obviously you don't want to end up with this in the first place, but if you do have a tangled roll, you can recover it. Um, I've got a pretty good foolproof method, method now after doing this for years. So you'll be able to see, if I pull this around, being very careful to show it in the camera, how it's looping under a few of those coils. So the trick here is to identify where that coil is going. Where is it going from underneath these ones? You can see it's underneath quite a few. And the trick is to try to grab those coils, push them out of the way, and then grab the actual filament, that's the actual one that is feeding out, grab it, which is easier said than done sometimes, and then pull it. All right, basically we are, we're undoing knots, all right? So it's still under a few. See, we can figure out exactly which ones it's under. You notice every time we do this, you end up with more of this. Now you're gonna lose a lot of filament um, in this process, but we can rewind it, it is possible. See that obvious cross there? Obvious cross there. Again, pull this out. It's getting to the point where it's getting a bit too long, so I might have to start cutting some filament out, but we'll see. That actually looks pretty good now. So we've actually effectively removed our knot. It's not a great wind, but it's fixed. So how do you rewind all of this without it tangling? Well, there's actually a technique to that too, and I'll show you how I do it. So we've untangled our roll, but we've got all of this filament, and we don't want to start another knot. Well, you have a few options. You can just cut it off. <laughs> if that's cheap filament and you don't care, you can just cut it off, but we want to wind it back on. And here's the thing. This is how I do it. You wind it like this, but this creates a rotating effect on the filament. You can see it's kind of nodding up. So you've got to make sure as you rotate it around this spool, this end is able to freely spin around. See, you can actually see it doing that. So I'm keeping a loose grip here, doing this, allowing this end to spin. If I don't do that, it actually twists here and you can end up with a very, very bad wind, which will very easily knot again. So keep your hand pretty loose. Let it naturally spin around on the end, because that's what it wants to do. And when you get towards the end, don't let go. <laughs> don't do it again. Just carefully find a point to nest it in. Every spool has a hole on the edge, just like that. Tuck it in. And now that is safe storage. And I've just got one more bonus tip for you guys as a thank you for staying to the end of the video. Sometimes you want to transfer a spool onto an empty spool. Like you've got a lot of a really cool color you want to share between your printers that are printing at the same time. And this is how I do it. You get your full spool, you tape the inside to the empty spool to make sure it doesn't come loose. You put your full spool on a spool holder. Give it a few turns by hand to make sure it's got a few winds on it already. And then you get yourself a cordless drill. Make sure there's a bit of foam inside the spool so it's nice and tight on the chuck. Put it in there and then automatically wind yourself some filament. So thanks for watching guys. Hope you enjoyed this video here on Make This Muse. Wow, this cordless drill is going flat really, really fast. Okay, I'll just leave it there. Thank you for watching, guys. I um, hope you enjoyed this video, and I is my aim on Makers Muse to empower your creativity through technology, and now hopefully you'll be able to manage your filament a lot better and avoid those really annoying tangles. If you did enjoy this video, I'd love to have you subscribe, and I look forward to seeing you again very shortly. Catch you later, guys. Bye.